Abend. Happy Earth Day to all. We are ecstatic to celebrate Earth Week at Goethe Centrum Hyderabad with all of you presenting three events this week. Yesterday, we had bare necessities with Sahir Mansoor and Mehul Mandeshwar. Today, biodiversity in your backyard. And tomorrow, on Friday the 23rd, the World Reading Day, HLF online book talk with Sahir Mansoor and Tim the Ridder on a book titled, How to Live a Zero Waste Life. So this week has had a do-it-yourself learning session, a hands-on session online, today the exhibition online, and a book talk online. That's the norm of the day these days, as you know. Goethe Centrum Hyderabad is a premier German language institute, teaching German from beginner level A1 to proficiency level C1. All classes have presently gone online due to resurgence of the corona crisis. We conduct external exams at the Institute, a class and exam schedules are available on view on our website. For our numerous cultural activities, please do check out our social media handles, our website, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Insta, Facebook, and the Twitter handles, please. My colleague will put it up in the chat box for you to follow them closely and to subscribe maybe. We're happy that we're able to present such a crucial and aesthetic experience, and particularly in the context of global concerns of re re respecting and preserving our environment and our earth. This exhibition, Biodiversity in Our Backyard, was planned as a physical event but had to be converted into an online exhibition presented virtually via the Kunst Matrix platform. And in fact, we have greatly to gain from this transition. So instead of 40 odd photographs on the walls of Goethe Centrum Hyderabad, we now have 140 photographs on view on this platform. Thanks to our photographers and thanks to my colleagues at Goethe Centrum who really helped curate these, these, this, this exhibition. During the lockdown, Kobita Das Kohli and Lakshmi Prabhala, the two photographers of this exhibition, spent time observing the flora and fauna in their gardens and found rich biodiversity treasures. Kobita Das Kohli is an amateur naturalist observing and documenting the flora and fa fauna all around her. She's happy to light the spark of curiosity and share her findings on tree walks, talks, and social media. She and a friend have continued to guide an activity class of gardening and nature awareness at a leading school in Hyderabad for close to 20 years. Kobita is an illustrator and worked at Titan as a watch designer. She's a graduate of plant sciences and botany with an MPhil in plant physiology. Lakshmi Prabhala is a Hyderabad based independent writer and photographer with a keen interest in culture, heritage, travel and arts. She's widely published and has authored two books, both in collaboration with Blue Pencil Creative. Her first book, Hide and Seek, a visual tribute to Hyderabad, was brought out in 2015, is a collection of daily life images in the city. Her second book, Orugalu to Warangal, Journeys Across Time, came out in 2019, is a book that celebrates the culture and heritage of the historic city. As a passionate nature lover, she's equally curious and alert to stories that unfold in green spaces. If you would like to reach, reach her, her Twitter and Insta handle will also be posted in the chat box to get in touch with her. The format of this event is to have a virtual opening of the exhibition, followed by the two photographers telling us about their passion and their journey in the making of this exhibition. 
and a brief walk through the virtual exhibition that this is. We are happy to receive your comments and questions in the chat box and time permitting, we may be able to raise some of these at the end of approximately 45 minute program. I am ecstatic to have with us as the chief guest to open the virtual exhibition, Rohan Chakrabarti, the iconic green humor cartoonist, one of the, if not the foremost in this field, in this part of the world. For those of you who remember pre-corona years of physical events, we actually had them. We have had the pleasure of presenting some of Rohan's works at the Hamburg Hall at Goethe Centrum Hyderabad a few years ago. Rohan is notorious for rolling up into a ball of ball like a pangolin to avoid meeting people. A cartoonist, illustrator, and the creator of Green Humor, a series of cartoons, comics, and illustrations on wildlife and nature conservation. Cartoons from Green Humor appear periodically in newspaper columns, magazines, and journals. Illustrations from Green Humor have been used for several projects and campaigns on wildlife awareness and conservation. Rohan is also the author of The Great Indian Trail, brought out by the World Wide Fund India and The Bird Business by the BNHS and has won awards by UNDP, Sanctuary Asia, WWF International, the Royal Bank of Scotland and the publishing next for his work. He's presently busy with bringing out another book. Over to you, Rohan, and thank you, Lakshmi, Kobita, and Rohan for being here with us. And thank you to all the people who have taken the time out in this mad weather outside. Can you imagine if you had to come to us to Goethe Centrum in your buggy in some form or the other? Well, here we are virtually in our spaces, quite dry, if I may say. And uh, over to you, Rohan. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Thanks a lot for the introduction, Amita ma'am. And it's fabulous being back to go to Zentrum, albeit virtually. And it's great to be amidst all of you, especially these three wonderful women, uh, Amita ma'am, under whose supervision, I've had the honor of conducting an exhibition here in Hyderabad uh, at the Gautha Center. Uh, Amita Ma'am, as you all know, has been uh, part of the cultural backbone of Hyderabad itself for, for, for many years now. And yeah, it's, it's uh, great to be with you here. Uh, a few years back at the Hyderabad Literature Festival, I found something uh, on the brochure called Treasure Box, and I was very interested in finding out more. As, as a cartoonist who draws about wildlife and uh, the natural world, I, I do not know much about botany. So I, 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 I'm somebody who's, you know, who's easily bored by trees and plants. But that was one evening I actually enjoyed learning more about trees and plants th thanks to the gray-haired lady you, you see here, the gray-haired but very young looking lady you see here, uh, Kavita Das. And she was one of the hosts along with uh, Sadhna, who I, I think is also one of, one of the participants here. Uh, so Kavita and Sadhna had conducted the, treasure, the tree treasure walk uh, as part of the Hyderabad Literature Festival. And I had the privilege of attending that and learning more about trees from these two lovely women. Uh, I didn't know that Kavita designs watches before I uh, read her in introduction uh, before this event. And I think it's only, uh, uh, it's quite understandable that a watch designer would be able to figure out and uh, focus on such minute details around her, her surroundings. Uh, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Lakshmi yet, uh, but I've I've uh, been very impressed by your uh, 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 by your bio, Lakshmi, and, and uh, the kind of work and the kind of books that you brought out, which I'm really interested to read. Uh, again, for a Hyderabadi, it's really fitting that uh, uh, you know heritage, culture, and biodiversity find their confluence in your work and even in this exhibition as with you as a photographer, because these are three things that Hyderabad is very rich in. Uh, speaking about Hyderabad itself, uh, I think there's something in this exhibition for everyone uh, of us here. Hyderabad is a city of gastronomic enthusiasts, right? And uh, uh, 
uh, I'm sure even those will not go home disappointed because there's a scrambled egg fungus in the exhibition. There's a marmalade hoverfly. There are no creatures named after biryani, but I'm sure the exhibition will leave a great taste in your mouth. Uh, speaking about my own experience with uh, with backyard biodiversity, I, I was always somebody who, uh, who was in the pursuit of chasing glamorous birds and animals. And so I would, uh, you know, if, if I wasn't traveling anywhere, I would consider it as a personal uh, defeat. So uh, when the lockdown hit, it was a really important lesson for me to be happy with, with what I have in, in my own surroundings. Uh, but not just be happy, it was also, even though the lockdown has been a period of great anxiety and misery for, for all of us, uh, it was a great learning experience for me because I started to focus uh, more on insects, on uh, on invertebrates, on amphibians, reptiles that I didn't know much about before. And uh, uh, having two dogs at home has also helped me because they helped me actually, literally unearth biodiversity out of my uh, out of my garden. And uh, and yes, yeah, sir, there there have been some instances where I could, I have uh, even though I'm on apps like iNaturalist and the India Bio Biodiversity Portal, which help you with identification of uh, the creatures you see and photograph. Uh, because I'm such a horrible photographer, there have been instances that I could not take uh, very good pictures of what I've, I've seen. But going through this exhibition has actually helped me identify all these creatures that I've documented but not been able to identify earlier. So I am somebody who's been learning a lot watching this exhibition and I hope you all will too. So over to you, Kobita and Lakshmi, and thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for having me. Here. Thank you, Rohan, and thank you for bringing in the Hyderabadi taste and flavors as well. I think that uh, completes it all. Sorry, I think I was, I muted myself. Thank you for being here and thank you for uh, uh, these very fine words. I think time is now to have uh, hand it over to both the photographers, Kobita and Lakshmi, take us through your journey and through your passion, we look forward to listening to you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, good evening. And uh, we're very grateful for you all to take time out and coming for our virtual opening. Tattoo on a weekday it goes without saying that, you know, it does mean a lot to all of us. Thank you, Amita and Goethe Zentrum for this wonderful opportunity, more so on the relevant occasion of Earth Day. With the able behind the scenes help from Jyoti and Satyendra Pal, our collection of images has transformed into a beautiful display. I must say I had my doubts initially because this is my first digital ex exhibition, but thanks to both of them, all our doubts were, were put to rest and, and the result is way beyond what we expected. I extend my heartfelt thanks to Roman, who agreed to join us on a short notice, even with the possibility of travel looming around. I'm certain many of us would agree that Rohan does have an amazing knack of introducing us to green concepts in a fun and engaging manner through his, uh, through his wonderful illustration. Thank you, Rohan, for also bringing up that connection of scrambled egg and marmalade. It, it, was, it kind of made me really smile a lot. And Kobita, my co-exhibitor in this endeavor, who is actually more like a mentor to me, is an inspiration in her own right to many of us who are eager to learn about biodiversity in and around Hyderabad. It was great exchanging notes and ideas on the ways of putting this exhibit together with you. With the announcement of the lockdown last year, many of us may have felt our worlds and lives coming to a screeching fault. To a street photographer or a travel photographer in me who loved the outdoors, this meant many restrictions. Travel became risky and places outside home became very unsafe because of the virus. The parks were also closed to public and hence my tree walks with, the with my good friends Kobita and Sadhna were also not possible. So I began to spend more time in the garden in our neighborhood. Initially as a break, from what became the new normal. To my pleasant surprise, it was during these interludes that I had a chance to observe some of nature's marvels a little more closely. Around July last year, many of us were getting used to the humdrum of the lockdown. Out of a blue, a neighbor texted me at around 10.30 and insisted I go down to the garden. 
Why? To see a flower. It didn't make sense at all. But eventually I gave in. I dragged myself downstairs to the garden and saw a big white flower, almost in full bloom. And it had a number of flashlights from mobile screens, mobile phones shining on it. It seemed to possess a radiance of its own even after the lights went off. So uh, later on, I found out that this is called the Dutchman's Pipe Cactus, which is in full bloom at night. And, uh, uh, and it withers away by dawn. Uh, in China, many people conduct impromptu parties uh, when these flowers begin to bloom. But for all of us, we were just so happy to see, uh, to see each other and catch up with each other after a long time because that human connect went missing for so long. Some of you might have seen the blue-eyed caterpillar on the poster to this exhibit. This is the oleander hawk moth caterpillar that is commonly seen uh, wrapped around oleander trees, flowers, stems and leaves of oleander trees. What you see as eyes over there, the blue spots are not actually eyes, but they are eye spots. Uh, when, when there's any danger, feels threatened, it flares up those skin folds and, and they look like eyes to ward off any kind of danger. But what was most interesting in my discovery of this particular caterpillar was that a neighbor's five-year-old daughter, she took so much fancy to this that she now is, is totally converted to nature watching. Every time she runs up to me and she says, auntie, what new insect did you find? What's interesting discovery today? And, and she never forgets to do that. So it was uh, very heartening to see that children, in spite of all these creepy, crawly uh, creatures are taking to nature and uh, in a nice way, in a very uh, enthusiastic manner. As many of us would know, nature offers a dazzling array of photographic opportunities, some of which also disappear very quickly. There's only a small window of time during which one has to make an image before it disappears. To make a compelling photograph in a garden, one needs to be patient, observant, and still quickly grasp what is happening. Sometimes uh, we are unexpectedly rewarded as well if you are patient enough. The picture you will now see is that of an ant mantis at the heart of a pinwheel flower. By itself, the pinwheel flower and an ant individually, they, they don't look so striking, but together the, the way they come together in an image makes for a very compelling what I felt. Uh, the ant mantis itself resembles an ant and uh, it preys on other ants and also wards itself from other predators because ants are not very tasty as such. So it was an interesting learning in many ways, uh, this particular slide. Uh, looking back, this, this terrible pandemic turned my gaze to the garden and opened doors to learning about various facets of nature. It motivated me to look for rejuvenation and creativity in a place where I did not expect at all. I would like to ask you all to step out into your garden or any green space near you, of course, with due precautions and safety measures, and make a habit of spending time with nature. You could learn more or write or paint or even just share your experiences with your friends in any manner you choose to. You never know what discoveries await you and how your experiences could also inspire others. We would like to invite you to view our discoveries and also you have as much fun browsing through them as we've had putting it together. Finally, happy Earth Day to one and all. Stay safe and stay up. Thank you. Over to you, Kovita. Oh, thank you, Lakshmi. Um, hello everyone and thank you for joining us for our launch. Your taking um, time out on a working day really means a lot to us. Rohan, thank you. And I really appreciate your joining us despite your urgent commitments. I have so much regard um, for what you do that it's indeed an honor to have you here with us on our launch. 
Um, the lockdown at the end of March last year meant I had to spend at least an hour, if not more, regularly working in my garden every day, which was not the case uh, before that. Um, because of this, I found myself noticing many more creatures. And with no busy rush, I had the time um, to spend to watch them, observe them. And every encounter I had with a variety of insects was like falling down the rabbit hole like Alice. Time slowed, the world shrank dramatically. As I marveled at the fascinating forms, the captivating colors and bewildering behavior, and my understanding expanded with an appreciation for every creature I met. I was hooked and happy to be finally living my dream of observing the natural world like the young Daryl did. I was, you know, Daryl Daryl was my idol in my childhood. When I'm not crawling in the undergrowth, I'm trying to identify the creatures I see only because I want to know more. And it's these are huge, exciting puzzles to solve. Reading up while observing the real world is a learning I enjoy. So I followed um, the life of a violent mantis for 74 days. At first, um, in fact, when I started um, observing him, I think he was about uh, uh, three halfway to adult stage. Um, and he had completed three molds. At first, he was naturally wary, but I uh, figured how to observe him unobtrusively. It was even possible to take occasional um, close up photographs. Um, they are sit and wait uh, predators, snatching prey as they uh, fly by, always alert. Every insect that flew by within a range of 40 centimeters caused a reaction. His body would jerk. He went through two molds during this period, and when he and he would disappear for about um, 10 days, only to reappear, um, to my excitement, um, a little bigger with larger antennae. And uh, after the second mold, he grew a little larger and had acquired wings and his antennae feathered. So he was an adult. And uh, by chance, uh, then I uh, managed to see him capture a small branded swift, a little butterfly. And that was the highlight of my uh, um, sessions with him or my time with him. Um, I also found an opportunity to watch a black and yellow mud dog or wasp build her nest and uh, provision it with paralyzed spiders. Um, I didn't know that. I had, I, you know, I read about it and I always thought uh, mud daubers um, paralyzed caterpillars and uh, used them as provisioning. But uh, this particular wasp, uh, you know, goes after spiders. Building the nest was a quick and efficient process. I was amazed. It took her uh, less than 90 seconds um, uh, from flying out to fetch the ball of mud and to return. But it was fascinating to watch her uh, technique of building. Um, very careful, precise, checking all the time. Uh, provisioning required long sorties to find suitable spiders, I guess. Uh, she would, um, you know, at the end of the day, secure that uh, tubular nest um, and larder with a neat plug of mud and prizing it, prizing it open the next day, the following day, and uh, before going off to search for more food. So her first cell that she built uh, required uh, two days of provisioning, two days to uh, hunt for sufficient spiders. Then of course she would lay an egg on um, inside and then seal the nest. Um, I read up about hatching times and uh, marked the date uh, hoping to see the wasp emerge, but unfortunately, um, I missed it. And that was a little too late that day. And uh, the adult wasp had emerged and I left the nest um, before I got there. Bird watching, of course, is uh, far easier um, since they often announce their presence by call or song. Um, a few shallow bowls of water under a shady tree a variety of shrubs and uh, plenty of leaf mulch to hide those interesting insects to them. Uh, occasional ripening fruit and no pesticide use is like laying out a red carpet for the birds. But a balcony garden would be just as good. 
Um, familiarity is fun as we begin to recognize uh, the songs, the behavior, and the characteristics, and suddenly realize that they've been watching us as well and learned our routines. Um, the small birds who prefer to bathe in uh, water drenched leaves, uh, for example, are quick to arrive when I start watering the garden as if they've been waiting in the wings, um, perhaps hearing the spray from the garden hose or sensing the smell of damp earth. The tickles, flycatchers, and fly robins also arrive to feast on insects that have been um, flushed out um, by the water spray, flitting so close that I can hear the wings whisper and feel the breath of air. So like Lakshmi said, um, it should be uh, habitual, a leg a regularity is the key, um, you know, whether it's daily or once a week or twice a week, uh, spend some time um, outdoors, watching nature and just uh, giving in to our uh, senses and uh, indulging in our curiosity is um, certainly time well spent. The abundance of life in our backyard is helped by the presence of uh, several neighboring backyards as well as a diverse and large uh, community garden uh, that we have. But more importantly, and I cannot emphasize this enough, uh, the rich diversity is because of the patches of wild scrub, water bodies, and a trickling river that we have in our vicinity. It is critical to preserve and manage some wild patches, including some rocky outcrops and their inhabitants in and around the city uh, without resorting to overt uh, landscaping or uh, planting exotics. The more we explore and appreciate the city's um, natural uh, biodiversity, we know the interdependencies and the um, amazing services they render. We hope citizens will speak up and um, join hands to conserve many such spaces. A good dose of vitamin N, I say, um, a stimulation of all of our senses and a sense of wonder certainly will boost our mood, mental acuity, and inspire. Or it's just simply fun to be out there. Thank you, Dirti Zentrum and Amita for recognizing the need to feature and talk about uh, biodiversity in the backyard to mark Earth Day today. And um, also there's an opportunity here to inspire others old and young to enjoy nature more actively. Many thanks Amita again, um, Jyoti and Satyendra for your encouraging support and enthusiasm that overrode our doubts um, many doubts, actually. Um, Jyoti and Paul, we're so grateful for your patience, unstinting effort and time given to first introduce us to Kunstmatrix and then upload and set up the entire gallery. Thank you so much, Lakshmi. Those who are saying, I have no words, uh, for having me on board uh, for this event and your appreciation. Plus, of course, um, the best part is it's wonderful sharing um, the joy of a common pursuit. I'm extremely fortunate and grateful to my entire family and my friends, old and new, for their appreciation and encouragement uh, of my wild pursuits. I invite you to view the exhibition, everyone, uh, where we share some of our encounters. Hope you enjoy this and uh, happy Earth Day, everyone. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Lakshmi and Kobita. That was very, very wonderful and passionate. And yes, to invite us to look in our backyard and in the meanwhile, look at the exhibition. Uh, do we now, uh, Jyoti and Paul, get to see the exhibition? Do we get a little glimpse of that? <laughs>
you can see friends, there is a link that's been given, do click on it, go in. And as was being done in the video, you can actually navigate it, hold, read properly, go and look at the visuals and look at the information given there, go for a guided tour or walk it yourself. All of this is possible for 140 visuals that are available. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous collection of very professional photographs. If uh, Kobita and Lakshmi are open, there are a couple of questions that have come up here. May we take them uh, now? Sure, Amita. So um, here is a question from Rohan. Um, could you figure out how many compartments roughly there are? Oops, I have missed the question. Rohan, would you like to just ask? Somehow it has just jumped up. Would you like to ask the question? Rohan, can you please unmute yourself? Yeah, Rohan. I'm sorry, Sita. I don't know how this got sent to you directly on the chat. So I, I just pasted it again to uh, to everyone. Yeah. So my question, Kavita, is about the uh, the mud of a wasp. It's very interesting that that you uh, could observe uh, the mud of a paralyzing spiders because I thought that's a specialty only of the spider wasps, the Ichneumon spider wasp. Uh, so that that's quite interesting to know. I I happened to uh, watch a black and yellow mud dauber in Nagpur uh, bind its nest using bird droppings. Have you uh, observed anything like this? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, I didn't. But it, the the uh, after she had made a brown um, nest, she later tried to camouflage it with little splashes of lighter colored mud. And I don't know how they do that, but. Right. Um, they, they have this tendency to do that. It's amazing. Even I'm amazed. Um, you know, I don't know how they do that. Uh, you'll find a, you know, brown, muddy uh, nest lot and then, you know, a little mound with gray patches on it uh, as if someone's it's amazing. So are they using the droppings to blotch and hide the nest or is it it's as a binder? I have a feeling it's a, it's a, it's a camouflage. I That's see. my take. Yeah. I see. And, and could you figure out how many uh, compartments do they have in the nest? Uh... Uh, the one that I was observing, she made four altogether. But I think it varies depending on uh, how many she thinks she can provision, or how many she feels uh, she's up to it. I mean, so it's amazing, actually. And she started uh, this particular nest. Uh, it was during the uh, start of the monsoon. So I think she had a really tough time provisioning uh, the nest. She, in fact, left the last uh, uh, nest open. She abandoned it. I see. So uh, do, do they leave the, the cavity open for themselves to come and... Uh, no, water no, they, oh. no. There is, in fact, another uh, wasp, which uh, I have uh, you know, photographed, and it's part of the exhibition. And they do, uh, uh, you know, they do uh, roost. Stand the, yeah, along with their uh, larvae. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. But they don't. These wasps don't. Yeah. Sorry about the deluge of questions and uh, not at all. And for the goof up, <laughs> I'm, I'm not very proficient with Zoom. So, <laughs> and thanks for answering all the questions. There are tons of questions and comments. Thanks, Rohan, for asking that one. One of them is saying that um, you know the creepies and crawlies that we actually consider all yucky actually look so beautiful. I think that's that's such a lovely comment to make. And there is Lakshmi Sahiti asking, she also takes photographs of flora and fauna. How is it that yours turn out so beautiful? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough question. Maybe a little practice and, you know, knowing when to go close or when to go a little far, things like that. I mean, it's, it's an on-the-spot decision. It's a very intuitive process. But yes, it does come with a lot of practice. I hope I've answered Wonderful. your question, Lakshmi Sahiti. Well, somebody is uh, also saying that in, in better days, they would like to join you on your tree walks. And maybe on these tree walks, maybe you can take your camera along and help people who would love to, love to 
catch these creepies and crawlies and make Most lovely photographs. <laughs> Most certainly. Lovely. Um, yeah, people are saying this has been such an inspirational talk um, and wonderful way to celebrate uh, uh, Earth Day. Ashish Pitti is asking, when is a book on Hyderabad's natural diversity coming out, Kobita and Lakshmi? This is a serious question. He's already raised it a few times today. <laughs> yes. He has raised it earlier as well. Uh, thank you so much, Ashish, for your constant uh, reminders and encouragement. Um, we hope certainly that maybe this will lead to, um, you know, uh, a book. I hope, we hope so. By the way, Rohan is also coming out with the book. <laughs> that will be something to look forward to. <laughs> Would you like to say something about that book, Rohan? If you're allowed to, if you're, it's, it's, it's okay to do so. <laughs> Sorry, this, this is Kavita and uh, Lakshmi's evening, so I will not uh, answer <laughs> the book. <laughs> All right. All right. Sure thing. Um, that's right. There is just, I mean, the chat box is absolutely full of marvelous com comments here. Ah, Sangeeta Verma is asking, what is the advantage of having bandicoots in your garden? <laughs> Kovita, I'll let Kovita take that. <laughs> I wish I could say that, you know, that you know, one or two bandicoots wouldn't, uh, you know, harm your garden. It depends, actually. Um, well, they do tunnel underground and maybe, you know, uh, provide some aeration to the plant roots. But unfortunately, they also um, can do uh, quite a bit of damage. But if they're not, uh, if you have large trees, um, it's perfectly fine to have a few of them around. The thing is their numbers proliferate if, if there's easy food um, available. And that's the unfortunate thing. And there's always easy food available because if you know of um, garbage nearby or some such thing, but if you can um, you know, uh, control that, uh, availability of uh, food scraps and food and uh, not have uh, too many uh, tubers and tuberous uh, vegetables that you know they would love to eat uh, then perhaps you know uh, you could contain their numbers it's very hard to contain numbers only because of um, us we are responsible for this uh, actually so it all boils down to that um, that's what we need to realize I mean you know uh, work towards uh, improving the situation. Yeah. I have a question. How many hours do you have to stand at a, at a site to get the right click? And how many clicks do you click to <laughs> finally get that correct one? Oh, Kobita, you take that first. I, I'll, I'll answer up to you. <laughs> um, sometimes it takes a uh, 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 bit of time, but you know, um, one can't. I, I find myself uh, in all sorts of uh, yogic positions, so uh, it's hard actually to you know uh, stand that way for very long. So sometimes you leave it and come back to it um, if it's possible. Um, but uh, generally, even the insect will not, uh, you know, wait that long. So actually, we have a pretty small window. It's not easy. Uh, you know, in pursuit of the insect, sometimes by just you know, tipping over the leaf gently and all that, uh, maybe we could spend another half an hour or so. But uh, yeah, not, not more than that. <laughs> <laughs> if it's butterflies half that you want to... Oh. Sorry. Sorry, if it is butterflies. Half an hour, I said that's quite something. Sorry, sorry, Lakshmi. No, I said if you wanted to, uh, if you want to click good photographs of butterflies, you have to be uh, prepared to run around in circles for quite a bit before <laughs> it's it settles down. And by the time you get the focus right, it just zips away, and again you're chasing it. So it goes on and on for a while. But it's not that difficult sometimes if you know the ways of you know when they settle down, when they roost, or when they're just about out of the cocoon, that's the best time to take photographs of the butterflies. That's right. So I recall you having posted Lakshmi, the cocoons and all the eggs, and then they, and then they become a butterfly and then the actual, uh, it, it emerging out of the cocoon in various phases. 
You must right. have sat there overnight, I suspect. Not really, uh, Amita. I actually discovered that cocoon by chance. I was chasing a moth and the moth led me to the cocoon. And I was like, I wanted to take the photograph of this cocoon for a long time. <laughs> And then I just kept observing it every day. They say by the time it turns dark, then it's ready to come out. Oh, and usually butterflies come out of the cocoon just as, you know, as it gets warmer through the day because they're cold blooded insects. And when it's warm and, uh, you know, just getting warm, it's easier for them to kind of warm their wings and dry them up once they're out of the cocoon. So a little bit of reading up and things like that. We, we can expect what is going to happen. And that, that I would say was sheer luck to be there when it was just about coming out. Fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, a lot of it is luck. If you keep uh, at it and you get mm. lucky so that, you know, that'll take you back. It's, it's a habit, like Lakshmi said, if you, you know, you need to make it a habit. Mm. Um, just go out there sometime and expect to see a lot. It's a regular thing. Wow. So uh, somebody is saying that has National Geographic discovered you yet? <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be quite a while before that yeah. happens. <laughs> right. You must be on your feet all the time. Usha is saying, does it make you walk much more gingerly in your backyard? Being aware that all these amazing creatures underfoot or in the leaves and no firm strikes because they're all over the place? Uh, they move out actually. Um, they're, they're very quick. They're quicker than we can even uh, imagine. So uh, they're normally not underfoot. Um, I don't know, Lakshmi, have you ever found this? I have not come across this. No, no. They move away, if at all. Yeah. Yeah. They, they quickly scoot away uh, before we even know it sometimes. I mean, for all the insects that we actually take photographs of, you will have at least, uh, you will uh, realize that at least 70% are those that we have missed. So <laughs> that is that's just a rough, appro rough approximate. I see, I see, lovely. To the question of bandicoot, um, Sangeeta, <laughs> Rohan had to say that, you know, his, uh, Pet dogs just love them. I mean, they're just a, a wonderful chase for them. And somebody's cat, Ira's cat, as well, uh, enjoys having the company of these bandicoots. So I suspect that's a pretty good reason to have them around. And if you don't have dogs, please get them because they are fun. Right. Yeah, I I think there are just fabulous comments about, about uh, your work. Um, non-stop, fascinating, excellent, you know, you have to read the chat box. And I think, I think what I would like to urge the audience here is to please click on this website as soon as you can uh, and the program is over and take that walk through. It is one of the finest set of photographs that you will be able to enjoy, not in one show, but you'll have to go through them bit by bit because they are absolutely beautiful and there is a lot of material written there as Rohan mentioned earlier. Um, there is one more question and I'll, I'll end with that. Um, do you use a proper camera, a good camera, or do you do all this on your mobile phone? Uh, We've done most of the photographs, at least 80, 90% of the photographs have been uh, through a mobile phone, a good mobile phone, actually, because that kind of gives you, you can hide, you need not care, lug around those big, big devices needlessly. Maybe that would also scare away birds and things like that. Mostly we've used a small mobile phone because it's very handy. And yeah, I, only the bird uh, pictures are with my camera and I don't have one of those bazooka lenses either. Uh, but I do have a kind of a hide because my dining room uh, sliding doors, they, you know, I hide behind the glass and I take their pictures generally. <laughs> so, uh, only the birds because they will, you know, most probably they fly away uh, when you go to take their pictures. But yeah, the mobile phone is really handy. Um, it's perfect for this, yeah. Lovely, lovely. 
So what you're saying is that I could do it too. Yes, oh, absolutely. 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 <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. It's, awesome. <laughs> it's the it's the hours of passion out there that you know uh, has translated itself into what you have put together there. Wonderful. Well, any parting lines before we close this for the evening? Lakshmi, shall we begin with you, Kobita and Rohan? Yeah, I will just have to say what I've already said. Please go out there. You never know what you'll discover. In Hyderabad, people think it's a dry space, all grassy scrubland. You, you don't find anything, but that's not true. You'll be surprised and amazed with whatever you might find. Only you just have to give it some time and enjoy doing what you do. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for making this a wonderful evening. Rohan? Yeah, I'll repeat what uh, Lakshmi was, you know, saying, essentially, just go out there, enjoy yourself. I mean, be open with all your senses and, you know, the smell, the touch, the feel, everything, you know, works. Um, and you will surely enjoy your experience out there. And again, what Lakshmi was saying, um, you know, Hyderabad has a rich uh, uh, scrubland, corn scrub. It's unique, and uh, we have to learn to appreciate that. It's wonderful. It changes with the seasons, and our rocky landscape gives us uh, varied uh, habitats uh, and ecosystems. There's this one little toad who, you know, who breeds in those ephemeral pools that form just in monsoon. And it's done with the entire process of laying eggs, the tadpoles, and then becomes an adult and hopping around. Um, it's just absolutely brilliant. It's a, it's a rare toad and we have it. And, you know, we're uh, fast uh, destroying its habitat. And, you know, we need to understand the biology a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, behind it. So, um, yeah, we've got perfect uh, habitats actually in Hyderabad. Just go out there and enjoy. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for joining. Had a great I'd just time. like to highlight that uh, the I think the point of this exhibition for me is not for me to go out and be a good photographer, but for me to understand and document what's around me better, you know, and uh, I think that's what the takeaway should be because uh, Hyderabad being a city of rocks, which are quite an unexplored habitat in themselves, have a lot to offer. And, you know, uh, before you know it, the next uh, insect you photograph could be named after you. I would really <laughs> love a wasp or a hornet to be named after me, uh, not so much a house fly. But let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rohan bringing his humor everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thank absolutely. you so much, Lakshmi and Kavita, for taking the effort for putting the show together. I'm sure oh, thanks. each thanks. one of us has a lot to learn from this. Lots to learn. I agree with you, Rohan. That was the final word on this. There is so much to learn, so much to enjoy, and uh, so much to, to participate in, in the earth, in the environment, and... Um, Yes, a happy, happy Earth Day to all of us. Um, and uh, thank you, Rohan, for taking the time out. I know it wasn't the easiest day for you to take out, but you made it happen and we are absolutely ecstatic and honored. Kobita and Lakshmi, um, this was an absolutely marvelous experience. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to be able to go back and see these uh, critters and enjoy them and learn about them. The exhibition will be on till the middle of May. And uh, so you have all have time not only to go and see it once, twice, but spend as much time as you want in the exhibition, virtual as it is, but maybe that is why it makes it possible for us to dwell in it as long as we want. Thank you, Kobita. Thank you, Lakshmi. And a very big thank you to Jyoti Biswada and Satyendra Pal for making this happen. They do the midnight burning of oil and put this together. And it has been a wonderful, wonderful exhibition curated by both of you. Thank you all for being here with us for this virtual launch. It's wonderful, isn't it? And um, have a very good evening. Join us tomorrow for the book talk of how to lead a zero waste life. And the author, one of the author has, in the last five years, she says, created 500 grams of waste, which she shows us in a bottle and a transparent bottle. 
And what does she do with the rest of it? Well, let's find out. Let's hear Sahir Mansoor and Tim the Ridder talk about their book at HLF online tomorrow at 7 p.m. And the link will be circulated. Thank you all and a very good evening. Bye-bye.